Hey guys, welcome back to another segment of Guild Chat. My name is Joshua Davis, and I am joined by the illuminous, illustrious, handsome... Thanks, th th thanks Josh, uh, thanks. Uh, Col uh, Colin Johansson. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Hello. And uh, you know folk. And, uh, <laughs> thanks, guys, thanks. <laughs> and uh, we've got uh, some cool stuff to talk about. Yeah, so, you know, uh, back at the beginning of the year, we said that uh, here are all the features of Heart of Thorns, and over the course of the next, uh, next nine to ten months, we're going to be laying them all out for you. Uh, and we've, we've kind of snuck one in under the radar here right at the end, uh, in particular for you World vs. World fans. Um, and we've had some really great fans here at the booth all day who've been really fun to talk to. Uh, they've been here for all of our events. Uh, and we thought maybe we'd let them give a little teaser about what our, uh, what our reveal is. So why don't we have them come on up and they'll give you guys a little clue about what we're about to announce. Woo! Yeah, there it is. Yeah, Commander Tags. Commander Tags, boys. <laughs> we're, re we're just doing Commander Tags. That, that's it. That's the it. new color. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. There'll be a beige Thank commander you for tag. Being such great fans. We appreciate it. Yep. Okay. okay so that's it. So uh, yes. it, boys. that was that was a new color. No, it is not a new color <laughs> of commander tags. We have been very quietly working on very much requested uh, feature for World vs. World, uh, and that is functionality for your commander tag. The ability to control, organize, and really functionally run a squad. Uh, and we are going to show that off right now for the first time ever. I thought we agreed we were going to do like an oh. Oh, oh. oh this is the wrong, oh, the wrong this video. This is not the right <laughs> video. <laughs> that oh. is what a fountain Production looks like fail. with red oh. light coming out Ooh, of it. Ooh, that old red light fountain. Spoiler right, potentially gonna, for later. Maybe they're going to hear us and we're going to be yep. like, oh, wow. This Spoiler alert, that's though. Beautiful. <laughs> Real oh. talk. <laughs> okay. Let's let's maybe change videos or are we hey. just going to. Hey. 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 There we go. There it is. We in there, boys. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right. What is this? Is that some sort of create squad button? And now what happens? Oh my goodness. That's your cue, Hugh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I don't know. So, one of the big features about the commander tag is you now can actually get like a whole squad of guys. When you actually have your squad, you can actually organize them, you can separate them, you can do all these things, and it'll also show supply for World We World. <laughs> so, squads already existed. Yes. But this is, I would say, enhanced squad functionality. Yes, yes, enhanced squad functionality is a great way to put it. <laughs> I agree. I think uh, up in the top left there, you can actually see a little bit uh, of the the amount of uh, supply the squad currently has. You can see the squad now has one member. Yep. Um, you'll also notice, uh, conveniently in hidden in that UI, is a new profession icon uh, for the one of the elite professions. I believe that is the Berserkers elite That's profession correct. icon. Yeah, and you, you can blame me. I accidentally put that in there, but <laughs> well done, Jeff. Colin graciously said we could leave it in. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Colin. So you can uh, you can set an open squad, you can set a squad by invite, uh, and you can set a closed squad as well. Uh, yes. So you have a lot of control over your squad now. One of the coolest features about this is your squad can now show UI for up to 50 squad members if you are hosting a World versus World squad. 50 people in the same squad. And I actually, the most cool thing about this whole thing is that every group that you make, or every subgroup, because you can make up to 15, I believe. Yes. Uh, actually retains the functionality of a group in that any skill that you cast, uh, for example, like if you want to use a shout, which applies uh, boons to your party, it'll actually use that subgroup to apply those boons. So uh, it, it prioritizes people in your subgroup as if they were your party. Exactly. Yeah, this is huge. And you will you will have seen early on when we selected what type of squad it was. We picked from a large squad or a raid squad. Uh, Crystal is going to come tomorrow and tell you a lot more about raids in Guild Wars 2 and tell you a little bit more about how raid squads work as well to support that content. Um, but what we're showing you now is the 50-player squad. In particular, we designed this to support commanders in World versus World. But this also works in the open world as well. So those of you who battle against a quaddle for your three-headed jungle worm of death, uh, you can also use this squad UI to organize huge groups of players for that content as well. Yeah, and uh, you know, look at this fancy UI, scaling. Just I know. fancy, crazy technology. But uh, it actually does bring up one thing I want to mention is that, uh, so this iteration that we're showing you right now is actually an older version uh, of the squad UI. We've actually made some updates since then. So it's not, I would say, representative of the final product as it's already been iterated on multiple times since then. Uh, kind of a living design, but uh, I think the, the base functionality there of actually being able to meaningfully manage your pro your party and your all, everyone in your guild or your, uh, I mean, your what are we, what's the actual word? Squad. The squad. Your squad. Yep. So up to 50 members. Yep. Uh, 
actually pretty cool. Yeah, this will be yeah. great for guild missions, too. Uh, you can see the health there in green. Uh, people who are grayed out are far enough away that they're not registering to your squad or they're in a different map. Um, you'll actually notice, we'll go through a few more things here in the UI in a second, uh, features that come along with this brand new squad UI. Uh, in particular, shout out to, uh, to Trevor, uh, who's been working on this project for quite a long time, building the UI for this. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, think, uh, I think Brandon has been helping, and John has been helping a little bit get this yep. ready, too. Yep. Um, you can see we just made a sub-squad right there, and the supply spits out. And you can see how much supply each sub-squad has and the entire big squad. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is going to be huge for World v. World players. Not only going to be able to organize, organize in the subgroups, maintain you know, the, the same boon and buff uh, priority of your party, but you'll be able to see who has what supply. So commanders are going to be able to tell, hey, you know what? I'm going to move you guys down. Your guys are going to go out and go do this thing. You're going to get supply. You guys are going to be the roamer group. And they can all monitor that through this UI. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, even like when you're in, uh, say, if you're doing a large scale fight, you might have a group that's like your spike group. Yep. That's specifically going to be riding on the outskirts of a fight and going in on things. Being able to actually sort them down and put them in, you know exactly what each one of these sub-squads is doing is going to be huge. And exactly. you can send a message to your squad, as we just showed off there, and you can fire off messages to your squad or to your sub-squad to give commands to everybody who's in that, that group. Right across the middle of the screen. That's right. Yes. As well as we got right here is going showing is a ready check. So when you're starting out in World v. World and you want to make sure everyone's ready to go, because you know a lot of people getting their buffs ready, making sure everything's ready to go, the bags are empty, you fire that off, everybody readies up, it gives you the command, and you're ready to go. Yeah, I think like, before it's been such like a burden on like a commander to like know exactly what the the formations of each uh, party that he's got in his raid exactly. or in his uh, you know I guess in his, his squad. squad. Like there was no actual visual UI to represent that, so it's really re relying on them to have that almost memorized and know exactly what everyone's doing at any given time. Yeah. But this, I mean, being able to know where everyone is, being able to sort them into groups, like you said before. Like, some of these guys just might be your habit group, right? Yeah, exactly. And you send them out on very specific tasks. Yep. And you can manage so many more people now. It's actually almost like a new... I mean, it's definitely going to be a powerful tool for commanders. And the commanders who can use this correctly and to its full extent are going to be the ones that are, you know, far, abo far and above everyone else. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think I just think the strategic uh, layer that this adds for them is huge. You know, like you said, it's being able to split out those habit groups and know who's in them and understand how they're doing, see their health be able to recognize even the supply within those subgroups. That's uh, yep. it's, it's a game changer, I think, for, for World vs. World, uh, oh, yeah. for being able to really organize these huge groups of players. Uh, and we're going to keep adding functionality to this as well. Um, you know, this is just this is a key part of the Guild Wars 2 experience. And uh, we're, you know, like you said, this is, this is a little behind what the actual development that you'll see is. Um, also really exciting, this is in the beta weekend that we just announced earlier today. So Next beta week weekend three. Oh. 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 <laughs> Beta Weekend 3 <laughs> next weekend, you can play with this brand new squad UI in World vs. World. You can yep. play with it out in the open world. Um, and like I said, Crystal will tell you a little bit more about what this means to raids as well. Yeah, it's awesome stuff. It's going to be a uh, lot of fun. So we've got uh, one other thing which we actually already teased uh, to show you guys today. I assuming you were... I don't want to cut you off early. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I think... Okay, now yes, let's okay, move on. Yeah. All right. Thank uh, you, Colin. We have Colin's permission, we may proceed. <laughs> uh, I think we'd like to talk about some more of the uh, War vs. World upgrades that we have not completely gone through yet. Exactly. And uh, we do have a video. We do. That, uh, that'll detail this first one here. Mm -hmm. It's a fountain. No one will see this video coming. No, I know. There yet. we go. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> um, so one of, the, up the, one of the, the upgrades at the castle, one of the things we haven't really shown, we showed off uh, in our beta weekend, our, our World vs. World tests, we showed off keeps. We showed off towers, supply camps. But the one thing we never showed off was the castle because that's specific to Eternal Battlegrounds. So we're going to show you the two unique upgrades for the castle. So the first one we're going to be showing off is the Invisible Mist Fountain. Is that a final name? I don't. I can't. I, I, I can't can feel you struggling there. I, I couldn't remember exactly <laughs> now. I'm sorry, guys. But essentially, this is a really, really powerful tool for groups, huge groups, to be able to use because all the fountains in the castle you know, will like it's a uh, oh man you're there. it's uh, cloaking waters i can see it now cloaking waters thank you <laughs> i appreciate it i got it. you buddy <laughs> you go inside the cloaking waters as soon as you walk into the fountain you'll get a 2 hour is it 2 hour i think it's 2 what? no it's 2 minutes 2 minutes <laughs> 2 minutes oh my god i'm so sorry guys oh 2 minute goodness. buff where you're Let invisible he was having a seizure i know i'm sorry <laughs> 2 minute buff where you're invisible but the thing that's crazy about it is that you can go anywhere on the map with it 
You get your whole guild to go inside, or your whole squad to go inside. They run through the mist. Two minutes of complete invisibility. They can go anywhere on the map. As you can go you anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. Anywhere, anywhere anything. guys. Anything. Anything. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Um, so, so what's really strong about it is you can go in and then completely erase yourself from the map. Because right now, a lot of times, big guilds like or big groups have to rely on a bunch of other things. They have to rely on uh, all their their stealth classes, giving them constant stealth. Veil. Veil. Yeah, their veil. Veil one, veil two. But it's not long. It's not long at all. It only is you know three or four seconds, maybe five, ten seconds at most, and then they're immediately out. They can go anywhere with that two minutes. Yeah, I'm. Uh, so we brought the moose in here, and I think the main thing we wanted to show off is that uh, if you uh, if you lose the buff. You can't actually immediately reapply it. Yes, uh, there it does. There is a two-minute cooldown on that yes. bad boy. Yes, yeah, so you can't just stack it up by going yeah. in and out. D does a moose appear in the world and chase <laughs> you to prevent the buff from being applied? I not wish. Yet. I uh, wish. Not, oh, if Colin asks for yet. it, <laughs> yeah. If Colin asks for it, it will happen. <laughs> but the next thing we're going to be talking about is the final one, the the skill. It's actually the first thing to be introduced, I believe. It's for, true. Uh, we showed this uh, off. Objective claiming. It is calling down the airstrike on the on the castle. Uh, shout outs to uh, to Hugh on his cinematic. Uh, yeah, on my sweet here. fly cam. I'm, I'm so I'm such really a boss. Good. But it, the the airships will come down and they will lay into the castle, both inside and outside. They'll do four full rotations around the objective, and it just it's scary. If you're in there and you're on, on the opposite team, it will. It will take you out if you're not careful. So be very cautious. Great, great camera shot there. I'm, that was, I'm such that was a, I'm amazing. so amazing. I'm amazing. Uh, so give me a sense of the, the damage that's being done here. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm Joe Red Team, or is it Blue? I'm, I'm Joe Blue Team yeah. inside your base here, and uh, I'm whacking on your cap, your, uh, your keyboard there. Uh, how much damage am I taking per one of these mortar I strikes? I mean, it's a, big, it's a CC as well as about 10K damage. So it'll only take about two to three hits of this thing to really take out, and it's... I mean, you can see it lasts a long time, and they do a bunch of rotations around the, the castle as well. So when you fire that off, I mean, it takes a while for you to hold that castle because the castle can be bombarded from multiple different directions. So give me some specifics on this thing. Uh, so it's the final upgrade, I believe. Yes. The final tactic. The final tactic. That sounds like a game. Uh, <laughs> so how do, uh, you know, realistically, how long is it going to take me to progress and get this thing? Like... Uh, is this something I'm going to get it right away? Like, how long do I have to wait to really keep the upgrade? Uh, what's the actual application? So the castle, you're going to have to hold that sucker for a while, about two hours. There's tiers for guild claiming, and this is the third tier. So you have to go through each tier to get to that final tier to finally slot it. After you do slot it, it's going to take some time to actually fully equip. And then when you fire it, it's going to go on a cooldown, a, fairly, a pretty long cooldown as well. Uh, it's like 30 minutes or so? I think it's like 30 that? minutes or an hour. It's pretty, it's pretty okay. long. It's pretty so long. So basically, it's like your last ditch defense yep. against uh, the, 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 the enemy Zerg, yep. I will say. Uh, you know, you're, I imagine the last guy is like in there. Everyone else is dead. Yep. He reaches out like Arnold Schwarzenegger style, yep. coming out of the lava, <laughs> pulls the lever <laughs> pulls back. Pulls the lever and then and, falls. Uh, and just, yeah. I've done it's everything I could do. Works every single time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's very cinematic. There's music yes. that plays. It's, uh, oh, yeah. The whole nine yards. Actually, none of that happens. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it, it's it's definitely that one moment where you can pull that and that whole the whole map kind of changes for that moment. You can see it pretty much from anywhere on the map. It's it's the thing. It's the final skip, the final tactic, the most strong tactic. So um, we've talked about guild claiming uh, quite a bit in the past. Uh, we've done a couple of blog posts on it. We've had some live streams on it. Um, but this is kind of the first time we could talk about it in the full sense of like everything that's included inside of it. Yeah. So I was hoping you can actually. If we start from the beginning again and kind of talk about like what guild objective claiming is trying to solve, or like what the actual intent of uh, this new system is, because it's, it's kind of an older system, but it's been completely redesigned. It's yep. like you wouldn't think that it was the same system. To yeah, with. exactly. So the the thing we did about guild claiming is you wanted guilds to have more ownership within the map. Yeah, you could claim a guild right now on, in World Be World, but all it really does is put your banner over that over it over the sides of the the objective, which is nice. Don't get me wrong. But like a lot of times, we cute. want it's it's cute, but we wanted some functionality. We wanted some meat, some meat on that system. So we developed the guild claiming system, and you still got to hold it. We wanted to make sure that it wasn't just something I claim it, I get all the benefits, and then I just walk away. You're gonna have to hold this thing. You're gonna have to own this thing. When you see the guild, when you see a guild on that thing, you're gonna like this. Guy, there's a lot of resources put into this thing, right? You can go and click on the map. A lot of improvements came from this thing. You can click on the objective icon and see exactly what's slotted. You're like, wow. They've got, you know, chilling fog. They got this. They got that. They got supply drop. If we hit this and take these from this, guys, they're going to lose a lot of resource. 
because those things weren't free. They had to make those things, right? And so that it, it puts a lot more emphasis on holding things and wanting to control the map and own a piece of the map. So no, uh, not all of guild objective claiming is actually about the thing you've claimed, right? Like, there's other benefits as well, right? Are there banners? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, one of the things is, like you just mentioned is the banners. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's a great Man. job. <laughs> You'll be here all day. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, but the banners are, when you it's a tactic, you activate it, it will spawn a banner at that objective. You can then pick up that banner and go out in the world and use it. You can use it both defensively if you want to stay at the objective, or you can go out and use it for assaulting or defending another objective or anything like that. It gives you something, again, like a base, where this is where all my upgrades are, but some of them will actually be able to go outside of your objective range. Another example is like we've shown is the char car at the, uh, the, dune, the dune rider at um, supply camps. It's a great. It's it's essentially a mobile siege weapon that you get. But holding a supply camp's not easy, so that's why it's it's one of those ones where if you can hold a supply camp and get a dune rider, you're doing it right. And that thing is awesome. If you guys haven't seen that thing, make sure you guys go check that out. It is amazing. Yeah, I think there's a you know one one of our goals in all of this, not just to create meaning uh, meaningful interactions for guilds and a true way for them to have a direct impact on world versus world, for people to get to know the guilds that are really running and winning the, the battle for their world. Uh, we also wanted to create moments for individual players. Uh, I think that's some of the greatest part of World vs. World is those stories occasionally of, you know, you have your moment as a player that you do something spectacular that helps everybody overcome or win a challenge or win a battle. Um, and things like the banners, is suddenly it's a chance for one person to stand out from the crowd. Uh, and I think a lot of times a commander will probably be the one who picks up the banner, but it's not always going to be true. Uh, sure. And I think there's, there's those things that this person now has the banner and they become that much more important and they get recognized and this is the banner carrier. This person's in the char car and you recognize them as they're now driving around. Each of those moments, um, this person pulled the lever and saved Stone Mist yeah. and called in the airstrike at the last minute. Uh, I think we want to get more of those moments in World versus World where it's huge battles, but there's moments for individual players to stand out to. Yep. Uh, and I think guild claiming is a really nice tool to help us get there um, in the steps towards where we want to get World versus World in the future. Yeah. yeah and uh, to add on to that, kind of, uh, you know, mentioned from the individual aspect, but I mean, also on the guild aspect, like knowing that an objective is claimed by a guild that you respect. Uh, and, you know, there's so much more incentive, like as a server, to, like, we need to defend Stone Mist because we're so close to the object, or we're so close to uh, you know actually unlocking our next upgrade. Or that applies to every objective, right? Yeah, definitely. Like, there's so much more reason to hold on to those objectives, uh, and you know if that's a, if there's a guild that you respect highly, like you know that it's going to get tr uh, taken care of. Yeah. You know? like, there's just so much more opportunity for everyone to actually uh, to actually care more about the objective. Yeah, and on that note, guilds have the ability to act or make it so anybody on their server can activate their well, it's tactics. An, it's as an well. option. It's an option. They had the option. So they can make it so it's just guilds. So if they're on, and you know they're fighting, and they want to make sure they're using it at the very optimal times. They're on team speak. They're on all these things, being very coordinated. But sometimes you know what? Hey, I'm gonna go. Our, our server is gonna go off, uh, go to bed. But we want to make sure anyone can use this because this is for the server. We're trying to win this matchup. They can make it public, and then anybody that goes from anybody on the server can go in there. And if they need that big moment, they don't have to rely on the server to be there. But again, that's an optional thing that they can do if they want. You can uh, you can also see enemy worlds upgrades and the progress oh, they're yeah. making. Uh, and I think it's going to create a lot of interesting strategy of you're going to start watching where the upgrade timers are on all the different locations that they're holding. And you might say, we know this guild, this guild's big time, and they just took over this objective. And in the next 10 minutes, it's going to tick over, and they're going to be able to slot an upgrade. Yep. Let's go take them out. You're going to start recognizing guild names a lot more on other worlds. And I know people already have oh, there's yeah. a certain level of that, right? Like of there's course. guilds that you see coming, you're like, okay, it's that guild. Back off. Get out. we got to get out of here. This is going to be that much more of, like, this guild owns this objective. It's really important for our world to take that out. I think we're going to see more rivalries develop between guilds, between worlds. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so you're not just going to dislike the world that you're fighting against. Yep. You're going to get to know the guild who's on there, too. And that's really cool for our game. And like like we, we said already, when you click the objective, you'll be able to pull that up, and it'll have the guild name there, too. So yep. every time you click on one, you'll be like, ah, that guild again. Oh, okay, let me see what they're doing with their upgrades. Oh, my goodness, we got to stop them from getting this. And it'll create those moments where you want to take those objectives to stop them. You have to, or else they're going to get some crazy stuff. And I think to take things even a step higher and to kind of look at uh, Heart of Thorns in general and World vs. World, I think most of the features that we've added, I mean, you know, the one we've shown today with uh, enhanced squad UI, uh, with uh, guild objective claiming, and even the design of the new Desert Borderlands map, it's all about adding new uh, layers of strategy to available to World vs. World. It's about empowering players to make smarter decisions, better decisions, and even uh, maybe even punishing players for making bad decisions, right? And I think this is really what Warfus' World players are looking for, is the ability you know, to make some more of those high-level choices that actually have a meaningful impact on the matchup. Yep, yep. Yeah, I think uh, you know, for, 
for all the things that we're doing with Heart of Thorns, uh, I would say, you know, looking at PvE with Masteries and PvP with, uh, with PvP Leagues and, and the idea of adding raids to the game and expanding Fractals, uh, all of that content is really aimed at kind of addressing the core feedback we've had over the last few years about mm -hmm. what would I love to see from Guild Wars 2. You know, our fans tell us, this is the stuff I love about the game, here's the parts that I'd like to see added to and grown on. I want a more robust experience, end game experience. Um, I think for World versus World, uh, we're doing some of the things that fit into that list. I think, for example, you know, uh, making guild claiming more impactful is great to help make guilds a bigger part of World versus World. Yep. Um, the new Borderland allows for, I think, larger tactics and, and a stronger sense of making strategic decisions and having those pay off or get punished for them. Uh, but there's definitely some things there that we haven't been able to address yet with World versus World. Exactly. Uh, and I know our, our competitive game director, John Corpening, left a post recently on the forums to talk about this. Um, but we do want to reinforce this message to our World versus World players is we know a lot of the things we're doing in this expansion is about making the minute-to-minute -minute gameplay in World versus World better. Um, but there's some higher level things beyond that that we do still need to address. We know night capping, um, scoring system, reward yes. system are big yes. pieces out there. Uh, and those are going to be you know, our number one live priority for development after this expansion ships is addressing those issues in World versus World. And I think once we're able to address those issues, these systems that we're adding now will shine even more because strategy will be that much more important when you really care about the scoring system that's behind it, when night capping doesn't define necessarily the score every week, yep. um, and when the reward system is more robust as well. Um, and so, you know, we, we realize some of the stuff we're doing now is not necessarily everything that people want to see from World versus World, but we think these things are perfect for World versus World, and once we've done everything we want to do, these will make even more sense and make the game that much more robust. Yep. <laughs> All right, Josh, back on you. Was that mic drop? Or are we done? <laughs> I think I was it right there, boys. <laughs> you sit back down. I mean, I, I think it's really great. We, you know, we mentioned before, uh, you know, John Corpening, uh, that, was a hard, that was a hard thing for us to kind of own up to, I think. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard for, I think, anyone. Uh, I'm terrible at taking feedback. Uh, oh, excellent. It's, it's really hard even to do as a, as, a, uh, you know, as a game developer to say that we, we understand that our baby has its flaws. Um, yeah. But, you know, we're going to do what we can to make it better, and I think we have a really great plan laid out uh, internally to actually get us there. So I'm really excited for the future of World vs. World. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, w one of the benefits that we're going to have, too, is when we launch, I mean, we're already seeing this with, with the game being free, is we have tons of new users pouring in, and a lot of the worlds that maybe suffer from some of the population issues, things like that, they're having less of that issue right now uh, as people are going and getting levels and jumping into World versus World. When the expansion ships, there's going to be a window in there where there's so many people playing the game that some of these problems become mitigated for a while. Uh, yeah. And it helps, too. I mean, it gives us a little bit more time yep. before we have to address some of those those issues potentially again. Um, but ultimately, I think you know we, we had a great CDI discussion a while ago with our players about what would we like to see in World versus World. Uh, and we've been working on all of those things quietly in the background to get World versus World the same types of experiences and the same types of solutions um, that really this entire expansion was built on. Uh, and once we hit that last piece, I think every game mode in Guild Wars 2, every experience in Guild Wars 2 is going to be something where you know exactly what it is we're working on, you know what we're going to deliver, and we're able to come back and regularly just keep updating those things. Like, Guild Claiming is going to be a core system of World versus World in the future that we're going to continue to update and add new abilities to. Uh, and I think that's a really key part of you know showing off what we showed here today. That squad, uh, the upgrades to squad UI, you know, that's a key part of helping these commanders organize big groups of players. And we want to do more than that in the future uh, and allow for even more coordination for them and help them out too. Um, so we're we're really excited about what this stuff will bring and where we're going with World versus World beyond that too. And we can't wait to tell you more about that. All right, guys, did you have any uh, final comments before we uh, wrap this baby up? I think we covered it all. All right. Uh, I just say, uh, you know, we, we showed a lot today. There's a little bit more about the enhanced squad UI that you're going to get to see tomorrow. Uh, Crystal is going to be doing a, a lot of information about raids tomorrow on her, her show. Uh, and uh, she'll also be coming back to show you more about how squad UI works in raids, too. Uh, so definitely do not miss that. Uh, and uh, also, you guys, I believe, are doing a little stronghold today. That's right. We are doing a little stronghold yeah. right after this, I believe. Yeah, uh, right after this, we're going to do some stronghold. And then actually, at the end of the day, um, I'm sure there's great stuff in between, but I still sure. remember it off the top of my <laughs> head. Uh, I'm sure it's all fantastic stuff. Uh, I will be joined by Arenio again, and we'll have uh, Fantaram. And we'll be giving a preview of the upcoming balance update that's uh, coming in pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. A a balance update for Guild Wars 2 coming very soon, being previewed in just a few hours. How about that? Yeah, it's pretty yeah, awesome. And actually, I'm going to mention the game here again because I'm so excited about it. I'm going to sing it from the mountaintops. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Hugh and I were up here like literally 20 minutes ago, 
and uh, you know, for us to be able to say that we're committing to a, a pretty set cadence on what we're going to be doing with balance updates in the future is, I think, a pretty big thing for not only PvP, but World vs. World as well, because, I mean, game balance is huge in World vs. World, and true. Uh, you know, being able to, look, to address those issues and look at them on a more consistent basis, I think, is going to be huge. Yeah, I think uh, from a from a live strategy perspective, that's definitely one of the biggest pieces of feedback we've consistently got over the last you know last last year or so. Is we love balance updates. We think they're great. We would love to have a regular cadence where we can count on know they're coming, that you can plan for it, prepare for it, uh, and know exactly this is when it's going to happen. Um, and that is going to be a huge part of what we do right after we ship. Is we're going to be able to you know count on you do your balance update, your PvP leaks begin shortly after that. Your uh, cool stuff with World versus World is going on in there as well. Uh, and of course, you know, raids are going to be greatly affected by uh, what we do with balance as well. Yeah. Uh, and I think balance in PvE is going to become a more important part of uh, how we have to consider balance for the entire game. We really, you know, we have three distinct game modes, uh, and we're going to have to be thinking about balance for all three of those distinct game modes uh, as we do regular balance updates for Guild Wars 2. Exciting times ahead of us. Yes. How far away from launch again? We 29 days? 28 days, 28 days, I believe. Four weeks. Do you know that Izzy has a, a I'm not going to say the real name he gave it, but the clock above his desk <laughs> to check that. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. The happy joy clock of, oh, yeah. we're, of happiness. We're, we're excited and uh, yeah. not nervous at all clock. <laughs> that's, a, that's an old arena net tradition going all the way back to Guild Wars 1. Uh, in our tiny office that was falling over into the swamp, uh, we had a giant red clock uh, that was like a ticker out in the, in the main hallway that you would walk by every day. And it had the countdown time until the next expansion ship. Uh, and in particular in that period where we didn't sleep and did two expansions <laughs> in one year in Guild Wars 1, I, I, to this day I don't know how we did that. I don't remember any of that year. Uh, that was always just like the Clock of Doom that you walked by. <laughs> that was absolutely insane. The clock of oh. Doom is closer to the one that's above Izzy, Izzy's desk. All right, guys. Anyways, uh, thank you very much. This was uh, Enhanced Squad UI and a uh, little bit of uh, World vs. World Guild Objective Claiming. Again, thank you to my guests. We had uh, Colin So Handsome and we had <laughs> Hugh Norfolk.